Let's talk about Chelsea. Frank Lampard described their defeat to Brighton as the most deserved of the three straight defeats under him so far. Many people saying Brighton are the team that Chelsea wish they could be. They really do need a whole transformation, Yanish. Uh, they do, and it's much bigger than we thought initially. I was I was embarrassed for the club, for the players, for everybody else. Uh, I mean, this was, uh, you know, here's a Brighton that's beaten them twice, right? I mean, they've taken a manager away from them. They've taken a player away from them. Uh, uh, and, and, and look at the way, I mean, Chelsea would love to. Look, I looked at that game and said to myself, just watching Chelsea play it as of late, if Chelsea were closer to relegation, they would have been relegated. I mean, the way they're playing right now, they, if they were closer to relegation, I don't know if they were able to save themselves. I mean, it's that bad. I mean, there's absolutely nothing. There's zero character. There's zero fight. There's zero uh, playing for the shirt. It makes you wonder why these players are there. I mean, you know, if it's not the money, what else? I mean, you'd have to imagine that at some stage you get a little bit of a bounce. You get... You know, you, you get that fighting spirit, you know, if it's against Real Madrid or if it's against Brighton or if it's against anybody. I mean, I can't remember last game that Chelsea played where you could say, wow, this gives me hope that Chelsea can get back to their ways right now or in next year or the year after. I mean, I thought that maybe this this project is going to start paying some dividends in terms of seeing uh, some identity and where you can say, OK, Next season, if they add here or there, I can see Chelsea being a little bit of a contender, at least for top four. Nowhere near that. I mean, I think this is going to take three, four, five years. I mean, this is the biggest decision in terms of a manager and direction that they take this summer. It's one of the biggest decisions in Chelsea's history, or at, at the very least in the recent history, in the last 10, 15 years. If they get that wrong... I mean, K, I mean, they have players on six, seven, eight year contract that doesn't seem to be a good enough and it doesn't look like they want to be there. Should we get, let's, I've got so many questions with Chelsea, so we'll, we'll get through them as fast as we can. When you say that, is there any player that stands out that you think, I don't know if they should be there, if they want to be there, that's actually playing right now for Chelsea? And, you know, I've changed my mind in that because I remember a month ago, you know, you and I were talking about that and we we're looking at the spine and we were talking about maybe the Thiago Silva's or Enzo for, you know, you know, Enzo's and all that. And I'm thinking, now, OK, Thiago, I mentioned because he's the best of the rest. But I mean, it's not like he's been great. Certainly he's not the future. So, I mean, you can't look at him and say, well, we're going to build a team around him. Right. He's going to get another year. Who knows? Maybe we see more injuries than that. And anyway, against the best of the best, you're going to see Thiago Silva struggling as well. So he's not there. Enzo, he's one of those that I love and everybody else loves because of what he did for Argentina. But now we have to look at Enzo. What is he going to do for Chelsea? And I still love him. But, I mean, he's not a holding player. He's never been at Benfica. He really sort of became that with Argentina. But look at the players around him and the strength, you know, uh, uh, with McAllister and everybody else that's that's played around him. Uh, so I don't know if ultimately, I mean, Enzo can hold that midfield on his own. If we think an N'Golo Kante can come back to his normal level, maybe. But that's even a doubt. And then when we go elsewhere, tell me a name. Who? Havertz? Not good enough for this league. He's the, you know, he's the team of Werner. And, you know, you see team of Werner back in Bundesliga banging in great goals. Maybe that's the level. Not a knock in the Bundesliga, but it's certainly a different uh, a di different way. Not to mention that he's playing out of position. So what are we going to get out of Kai Havertz? Probably not much more. Sterling? His best is past him, right? And he's not going to be the player that's going to be deciding games for you consistently. Who else? I mean, Pulisic, obviously, you know, he's going to be gone. Who are the key players that we're going to mention? Reese James. Okay, I'm not going to say Reese James is not good enough, but he came in and Mitoma did every, whatever he wanted to do with, with Reese James. Where, when, when Frank Lampard had to make four substitutions at the same time, right, and still made zero difference. Four players that he was probably key players that he was saving for, for uh, Real Madrid came in and made absolutely zero difference so this is your Chelsea team where you think there's going to be some pride some quality to play a level game against Brighton 
you know, all we want to say, Brighton is a good team, but where where's Brighton ever going to go? Even if they somehow, you know, they're going to have a great season, they're going to sell one or two, three players, they're going to find great players again, but they're going to be Brighton. No more than that. Okay, Mason Mount, what would you do about his future? I like Mason Mount, but I don't think Mason uh, Mount likes Chelsea. So he's gonna he's gonna jump ship. That's that's my prediction, and you know I I can't blame him. Mark Kukureya. Well, he was Potter's team. I, I mean, you know, not Chilwell is a better player, right? But you know, we all love Kukureya, you know, at Brighton. But just goes to show to what I was saying: different pressures, right? That's why I, you know, I respect, I love what Deserbi has done. I love watching Brighton. But there are different pressures playing for Brighton and playing for Chelsea Football Club. Uh, and uh, Kukureya is a great example of that. Not good enough. Aubameyang. Aubameyang. Yeah, I mean, that I, I never understood that, right? I mean, there's a flaw in his character that prevents him to use the unbelievable talent that we saw when he was at his best at Arsenal. And I don't know if that's going to change. So what happens with Romelu Lukaku? Should they should they take a chance on him back at Chelsea? No, no, not anymore. Uh, you know, we've seen him. You and I watch him closer. Right? We we both watch Serie A. I mean, hasn't had a great season. I mean, yeah, he can deliver from time to time, uh, but at, at Chelsea, at any Chelsea, even at their best, but especially this one, you can't have a player that may or may not deliver from time to time. You need somebody that's that's consistently healthy and consistently contributing to the game. I think Romelu Lukaku is past that. As we're going to air this morning, Chelsea have actually met Julian Nagelsmann for talks. I suppose what we have to talk about who is going to come in and be the manager to actually try and work on this transformation and get Chelsea fighting on all fronts once again. First of all, what do you think of Nagelsmann as this fit? Look, I think he can. Uh, he's got a clear identity. He's had success at a smaller club at Hoffenheim. Uh, he's had success at, what was he, Leipzig, but I don't consider it a massive club. And he didn't succeed to some degree, I suppose, at Bayern Munich, although as we see right now, I mean, he was tremendous in the Champions League, won every game up until the moment he got fired. Thomas Tuchel came in, Thomas Tuchel, who's been at Chelsea. And obviously, if you look at his record since he came in, not very good at all, right? I mean, lost to Freiburg in the Cup, barely beat Freiburg. Um uh lost to Manchester City and over the weekend they drew again, right? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I think time. right. So Thomas Tuchel, previous Chelsea player, has been absolutely awful at Bayern Munich since he came in. An experienced manager, knows the league. Yeah, but we're not gonna talk about Tuchel. We, we're gonna talk about Nagelsmann. So so one worry is is a little bit, you know, I mean, he's much better than Graham Potter, but I mean, this is a massive club, massive jump. Uh he's had that experience at Bayern Munich. But I liked his identity, I, a, a clarity. He's tough. He's been managing for a long time, even though he's he's a young coach. So I think from all the names that I've seen so far, he gives you a best chance. And maybe the fact that he's been in this game as a manager since he was young, maybe somehow he can identify with some of these young players. And that's important because it's tough coming to Bayern Munich, right? Uh, 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 dealing with all these egos. There are some egos, but Chelsea egos are easy to get rid of because nobody on this Chelsea team, with the exception of maybe one or two that we've mentioned, should have an ego because they're not good enough. They're not old enough. They haven't won enough, in my opinion. And, you know, don't get at me. You know, I don't want to mention the yes, pretty quick. There are players that want trophies, but I'm talking about, you know, the new players that are coming in. Uh, I think that, you know, they have still a lot to prove right now. And I just wonder if Nagelsmann may be just the sort of a, a manager that can identify with the younger generation and push some of the older players because he's dealt with big names already. So you don't think that a return for Antonio Conte to Chelsea would be a good thing right now? Yeah, I mean, he, he needs to go back. Look, I... I you know how much I respect him. I've liked him. I thought that his appointment was was very good. At least I I thought. But no, I I just I just don't like you know the negativity, the the style of play. It 
I, I mean, I don't mind in Serie A, but we all know the Premier League is something totally different, right? And when you go to a big club, you have to entertain, you have to play from the front, you have to make players better. You can't just ask for more and more and more and more. And and in fact, I don't know if Chelsea can give Antonio Conte more and more. They've spent enough and they have to sell a lot of the players in order to get uh, new players in. So Antonio Conte, not a good fit. OK, and Manchester City are going to win the title. Janusz Mihailik has finally said it here on PL Express. We'll see if he changes his mind next week. See you then. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.